Hey, what is going on everyone? Today I'm gonna to bring you a video about an amazing website that can help you forecast wind and swells. Now, as y'all know, I'm really good about sharing experiences and knowledge, but you have to understand that I'm a trained amateur and I don't want you guys to try this stuff at home without doing a little bit of homework first. So the website that I wanna turn you guys on to is called windy.com. Now in the past, I've put together videos where I tell you guys, hey, go check out xyz.com to get a quick and dirty forecast in terms of wind and swells. All right, well, this website just blows everything out of the water and makes almost everything else obsolete. It is that technologically advanced and that comprehensive. And once you get there, there's probably one setting that you might wanna change if you're a landlubber like me. That you can do by clicking here, then clicking settings. And by default, it'll show wind speed and knots. I like to click over to miles per hour. It's just more intuitive to me. Um, in case you're interested, the conversion goes one knot equals 1.15 miles per hour. So roughly equal. We go to five knots here, about 5.75 and knots, 7.5, 20 knots. You have no business being out on the water, okay? As a matter of fact, I would argue that you shouldn't be out there when it's like 15 knots. At this point, I'm gonna maximize the window by clicking down here. And then from here, it's a matter of just typing in your home turf. And for me, it is Redondo Beach, Topaz Jetty. And then you can check out some webcams if you'd like. I'm gonna to go to forecast for this location. And then I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in. Okay, so what you're looking at is a visual representation of what the wind is doing right now. And these purple comet looking things show you the speed of the wind so if you have bigger comets with bigger tails the wind is going harder and more importantly it's showing you the direction from which the wind is coming from and the reason i'm beginning with the wind forecast is because i firmly believe that wind poses a bigger threat to kayak fishing newbies than swells ever could i'll show you why now i'm making this video on a tuesday night at 8 p.m but let's say some friends and I are thinking about going out Saturday. So what I can do is I can take this little rectangle and move it over. So I can do some forecasting. So we're gonna launch Saturday at 6 a.m. let's say. So here we go. Now look at the direction of the comet. Okay? And this is kind of specific to my neck of the woods. So if your neck of the woods is say, two, three hundred miles away, the wind patterns there could be completely different. That's a really important takeaway. So again, the wind pattern that I'm about to demonstrate could be very specific to just Redondo Beach. So the way the wind works around here, and I would imagine this pattern or this element is going to hold true for most of the coast. And so early morning, the winds are gonna be very light. Um, typically under five miles per hour. As a day wears on, the wind will kind of pick up typically around 10, 30, 11, and then they will peak around two o'clock, three o'clock, and then they'll begin to taper down. And as the sun goes down, it'll become very calm again. So on Saturday at 6 a.m., the winds are forecasted to be predictably very light, so under five miles per hour. And they're gonna be blowing out of, let's say, the northeast. Um, let's say like two o'clock on the clock face. Now let's move along the timeline and watch carefully as the wind changes, not only in terms of speed, but also direction. So I'm gonna pull this to 9 a.m., okay? So now the wind in terms of speed hasn't changed a bunch, okay? So a little comet still, 
But notice now that the wind is blowing out more like southeast. So it's coming from about four o'clock. Okay, so let's project out further. Let's go from 9 a.m. to about noon, 12 p.m. Okay, now, I don't know if you can tell from this video, but you can see that the comets have increased in size and the tails are a little bit longer. But more importantly, look where they're coming out of now. Now they're coming out of like, let's say, south, southwest. So from like seven o'clock. Okay, let's go out three hours further. So from 12 to about 3 p.m. Now you can definitely see that the comets are now bigger and they've shifted one more time. So now they're coming out from southwest. So I'm gonna say like eight o'clock. So the wind speed has picked up and the direction has changed again. So most people are gonna be wrapping up their fishing around noon or so, especially if they've launched early, like 6 a.m. And look how beautifully this wind pattern works. So when you launch around 6 a.m., you have a very light east wind. And then as you fish, the wind is gonna be shifting in a clockwise direction. And by the time you're ready to go home, you have a heavier wind at your back helping you along. It's awesome. And this is exactly why, if you're gonna launch from Redondo Beach, I suggest you head south. Because first of all, all the good fishing spots are either south or southwest. You have the Palomar Wreck, you have the edges of the canyon wall, you have the kelp beds. And finally, when you are done fishing, you have a pretty nice tailwind to help get you back home. So in the past, I've done trips where I've arrived at the launching dock around 11 a.m. and the wind was blowing really good, like 20 miles per hour. Now normally I would not be going out in 20 mile per hour wind, but I know that if I can get out there, or even if I fail, all I can do is turn around and I'm gonna have help on the way back home. Okay, so now that you understand the wind pattern, if you arrive at the dock and the wind is not acting according to script, your spidey senses better be on high alert. So if you arrive at the dock, for example, at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and the wind is blowing 15 miles per hour, look out. Because again, typically, wind will only get worse as the day wears on. So be careful. So my bottom line advice for new people in terms of wind is to go ahead and, and use this tool to forecast. And you're looking for a day where the wind is not going to go really past 10 miles per hour. So this would be a good day. It's going to peak out at 9. I mean, there are going to be gusts of like 16 or so. But generally speaking, something under 10 and also check the wind direction. So if you plan on wrapping up fishing around noon, you can see that the wind is gonna be coming out of the southwest, so that's gonna work. On the flip side, if you look at a forecast and the wind is gonna peak out at like 15 miles per hour, and or it's gonna be blowing out of the wrong direction, I probably would not recommend going out. Now, by contrast, swells are easy for a couple of reasons. Number one, they are largely visual. I mean, no one sane is going to go out to the launch ramp and then I ball like six to eight foot swells and think it's a good idea to launch. And if you do, you might become a footnote uh, in Darwin's theory of evolution. The other factor that makes dealing with swells easier is that they are largely predictable, or much more so than wind. So I'm gonna click on here, a little line. And then I'm going to click here, waves. So now what you're seeing is, you're not seeing the comets, but you're seeing more like snowflakes, right? So these purple snowflakes are representing the swells. They tell you which direction that they are coming from. And then of course, the bigger the snowflakes, the bigger the swells. So let me draw your attention back to Saturday. And you can see that if you focus in on the purple band, the swells are gonna be pretty much consistent. Two, three, throughout most of the day, and they don't change directions. 
And as a matter of fact, I mean, you could argue that the pattern holds true for the entirety of the week. And that's what I mean by the swell being much more predictable than wind. Now, as I mentioned, the height of the swell is very visually apparent. But there's another element about swells that some people may not know about, especially if they're kind of new to um, ocean going. And that is the last band here. And they call it swell period. Some people call it interval. And let me explain what that is because it can affect your experience out on the water. I'm putting my awesome artistic skill set on display here. Okay, so anyways, in terms of amplitude or swell height, this is three foot, three foot, and this is three foot, three foot. Now the swell period or the interval, okay, is the time in seconds between bumps, right? So here, there may only be like five seconds in between bumps. So it's gonna go bump, two, three, four, bump, two, three, four. Okay, so it's gonna be kind of like a rough ride, okay? Here, the swells are the same size, but you're going to have a long interval or swell period in between bumps. So this could be like 12, 15 seconds. So this well experience is going to feel much different than this well experience. And in general, the longer the swell period or the interval, the smoother your ride is going to be. As a matter of fact, I mean, if you're not prone to being seasick, I would imagine like most people can handle a five foot swell as long as the interval it is more than, let's say, like 10, 12 seconds. Okay, so let me give you a couple of examples. This scene right here is a rare, rare day. The wind is super light and the swells may be under a foot. And if they're under a foot, I mean, who cares what the interval is? Because it's basically the amplitude is non-existent. This is footage from my Catch Me If You Can video. Here we're posted up near the Palos Verdes kelp beds. And the action cam always has a tendency to flatten stuff out, but I would probably describe these as maybe five foot swells with a pretty tight uh, interval. You know, it could be like five, six seconds. So it's a pretty big rolly ride and, and probably not right for everyone. So the bottom line for newbies is you look for a day where the swells aren't going to top, let's say like three feet. And also you're looking for big interval numbers, 10 seconds, 12 seconds, 15 seconds. Now I should note that pleasant conditions for human beings doesn't mean that the fish are gonna like it and they're going to be on the chew. Often they kind of diverge. But if you're new, you have to address safety first and then you, you worry about catching fish. Okay, let's put it all together in terms of what I would look for if I were taking someone new out onto the open ocean for maybe the first time. In terms of wind, I would look for a day where it peaks out at you know, 10 miles per hour or something like that. And uh, more importantly, I would be looking for a day where the wind is blowing out of the right direction once we are done fishing. Swells, I'm looking for a day where you have swells that are, you know, nothing more than three to four foot and the swell period or interval is a big number 10 seconds 15 seconds would be better and with that i'm going to wrap up this video i hope you have found it useful um, i'll be posting a more action footage soon until then you know try to get out there and have fun but again be safe and we will see you soon on our next adventure bye for now